Pensions and Lifetime Savings Association Chair Leslie Williams opening the 2017 conference with stark statistics about the UK's ageing population. If you're looking for statistics about longevity, you need look no further than the ONS website. It tells you that the population aged 90 and over is less than 1% of the UK population. But it also tells you that over 570,000 people were over that age in 2016. That's more than ever before, and it's a population that has grown more over the last 15 years than any other demographic. As a country, really, we're not um, facing up to the fact that we've got a shrinking working population and a growing retired population, and that these sums just don't add up. I mean, the people that work, are working are not going to be able to afford to support people in retirement as that population grows and grows. Just one of the challenges facing the 1,500 pensions professionals attending this year's event and the specialist subject of the co-author of The 100 Year Life, Professor Linda Gratton. People change much faster than institutions. And so what you're seeing now is a deep sort of disconnect between how people would like to live and how institutions corporations, governments, are creating a context in which they live. We used to think about life as three stages, full-time education, full-time work, full-time retirement. Well, each one of those stages will now change. And what we're thinking about now is a multi-stage life where you're educated right the way through, you work right the way through, but you also have time for leisure and retirement right the way through. So you actually mix it up more. Crucial to diffusing this particular pension time bomb is the engagement of younger people, something this conference addressed last year with two teams challenged to tackle their lack of savings. 600k would give you about 18,000 a year, that's going up in line with inflation. So 300,000 would give you about 9,000 pounds a year. A 300k, 9k, you're, po you're possibly just living within your means. I really need to think about having my own little pot as well as that because, you know, who knows if there's even going to be a state pension by the time I retire. It's pretty scary. Revisiting the teams this year, it seemed the initiative had worked, with many subsequently spreading the word about the importance of saving. So when I got out, um, everyone was asking where I'd been and everyone was really shocked that like, they didn't know about their pensions either. So I actually um, contacted HR and asked them to come up to Manchester to just um, brief everyone really about their pensions. We have other um, schemes at work as well so that they were covered as well. But yeah, it was really interesting. And the ability to engage further with savers will increasingly rely upon the use of consumer-friendly technology, something the association's new chief executive wants to see the industry fully embrace. I think it's fair to say that the industry as a whole is not where it should be in terms of the technology curve. If we were to think about where it is, it's got a long, long, long way to go. We at the PLSA and the way that we do things with our members and the way that we communicate with our members we've got a long way to go as well. It'll be something that we'll be kind of um, focusing and prioritising on as an organisation, not least in terms of things that we discuss with our members. So aiming to decode the future for its members, the PLSA's comprehensive programme and 80 exhibitors here in Manchester looked to address key industry questions on day one. And with specialist streams and influential thought leaders still ahead on the agenda, delegates could be sure of more inspiration and ideas on day two.